It's Ghostbusters.com. My Metal Mark here once again with the living legend, Bobby Bliss. Hey, say partner, how are you? I'm, I'm doing good, y'all. How you doing? Yeah, I'm doing good, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> we had a great time. We did uh, we did one down at the Best Buy Theater, mm -hmm. and Mark had been uh, a transplant, I think, of about a month at that time, and he he had a southern all over him. So I was yes. I was counting his y'alls in uh, in that interview. The first one you called it out. And you're like, you can't do that. You can't do that, man. And so <laughs> you, you can't live here and use that expression anymore. I'm sorry. You have to leave some of that stuff down there. But I still have to say it, though. It, I mean, it only comes out now that I'm when I get like really drunk. Well, now that you have two years into to New York and living here like uh, a New Yorker or a transplant of such, that will uh, we like people to retain some of their charm. There we go. So it, it was just unusable in that first year, but now that you've made, <laughs> now you've now made, it's okay. You've made two years. It's okay. You get a pass. I you get a y'all pass. <laughs> Hell yes. Well, we are here obviously to talk about this beautiful new record. Yeah, Black great. Devil Armory. Holy shit, dude. It's 17 albums, and it seems you just get better and better. Yes. Like, how the hell do you keep doing this? Well, you just got to keep dodging the punches. Dodging you know? the punches. <laughs> <laughs> it's a defensive fight. You know, I, I think obviously there's, you know, there's, uh, there's still great motivation for us to do it because it's no longer a career. It's kind of a life, you know. Yeah. And, you know, all the way back in the early days, you, you know, when the rules for thrash metal were, were being written, you, you kind of felt like you were giving a piece of yourself over to it. And, and I suppose in some instances, and in that of three decades, yeah. that that is obviously the truth. So, so there's a great feeling of success in it, and there's motivation in it. Um, but I, I think the biggest thing for me, and I, I've been pushing and selling this for at least one of those three decades, is that the band is still relevant. You yeah. know, that it still holds... Uh, you know, the, the execution, presentation, uh, performance in, uh, uh, of 2014. You know, rooted in history, but still, oh, still yeah. uh, about today. So. Yeah, because it's, it's never the same album. There's always something fresh. Like, this one seems more of, like, a well-rounded attack instead of just, like, an all-out thrash attack. It seems like the songwriting, maybe I could be wrong, but it seems like you concentrated more on how the songs flew through this album. Is that correct? Or is that's that a, I mean, that's a pretty good take on it because I mean, it, it's kind of my take. Um, I, I thought the Electric Age was a great thrash record, um, but was missing that one dimension that, that rounds over Kill Out. You know, I, I mean, there are many elements that make us up, yeah. but still at the end of the day, we're identifiable. Uh, we're overkill. There's no identity crisis. Yep. It's, it's pretty simple. But the uh, it was missing some of the <clears throat> songs like Bitter Pill, which is like a halftime, yeah. or... Uh, you know, uh, something that has kind of a rock and roll vibe to it, like uh, It's All Yours or, or the punky vibe of Pig. You know, I mean, the, this was, you know, the thing to me that says, okay, that makes all of Overkill. Sure, th thrash is the word of the day, yeah, and, that, yeah. and that in the pecking order, that's always going to be number one. And at the end of the day, you're going to call it a thrash record, but still, it's got to get there by steps, and I think that this has uh, more dimension, more steps to it. Yeah. Very cool. But obviously, you re released the video for Armory already, and Bitter Pills the next video, correct? Or did you just shoot it with the same director? Uh, it will be the next video. It will be the next yeah, video. Yeah, we actually did a twofer. We we did uh, a twofer. We did the sh yeah, a twofer. That sounds like a southern word. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Uh, if I use it more than once, you get ding. <laughs> yes. I, th I think I was going ding ding ding. ding I know ding. there was a buzzer too. <laughs> ding 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 ding. But the um, we got uh, together with Kevin Custer. And um, the guys at E1 really wanted to double it up because, you know, there seems to be um, a great want of this community by its community yeah, right now. Yeah. You know, thrash for thrash kind of a thing. Thrash music for thrash people. And they said, let's do two. And Kevin said, I can work this out. I can find, you know, two locations and we can get great performance in both of them, you know, over the course of a period of time, uh, you know, uh, over the course of that day and make two videos. So we were really excited about that fact because it's, you know, it's an opportunity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, take that opportunity and go for it. Not like, let's not overthink this. You know, somebody's buying us lunch. <laughs> 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 you don't say, oh, come on, the hamburger's a little cold, the beer's a little warm, you know, it's free. <laughs> You know the experience. You have yeah. that down there? You can, yeah. You, you, that motherfucker, he could fuck up a free lunch. <laughs> <laughs> That's a new one. But you know what I mean. Yeah, I got well, you. Well, you yeah, could yeah. use that from now on. All right, thank you. you. Just, thank just you. tell me where you got you. it yeah. from. Yeah. yeah, tell me where you got it from. <laughs> but in any case, the you know the point is is that if you get that opportunity, take it. And, uh, and Kevin had great ideas. One performance, Armorist, and the other one uh, with storyline and performance for Bitter Pill. So I'm sure you'll see that prior to uh, the release of the record on the 22nd of July. Yeah, very cool. Well, you mentioned the 30 years doing it, and obviously the 17th album. To me, especially with the social media and how you guys utilize it, it's kind of weird, but it's, it seems like you guys are more popular right now than ever. Do you kind of feel that same way? 
you know, I somebody did tell me, you know, I it, some it's the free lunch kind of guy, yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> this oh, guy remember the good old days when we did this and that? I'm like, hey, listen, man, you got to pay attention because the new days are pretty fucking yeah, yeah, good yeah, too, yeah. you know, and that's. Uh, because there, there is seems to be there's a great hunger for this stuff you know which shows you that there's a great value to it it's yeah. transcended generations you know we have you know there, there's the, the you know the 18 year old uh, you know the 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 40 year old dad and, and in some cases the grandpa comes yeah, yeah, you yeah, know yeah. and it's a, and you think to yourself uh, my age but the <laughs> 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 That's right, I've never been vain. It doesn't, there you go. <laughs> it doesn't make sense with a face like this. You seem pretty honest. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it, that shows value. Yeah. And, and so, uh, you know, there, there seems to be, uh, you know, uh, that great hunger for it and, and uh, a great new day for yeah. this, you know. So, so, you know, my feeling is that un under those circumstances, it gives a band like Overkill the opportunity to be relevant in that current day. Yeah. You know, to, to not release something that sounds like 1990, but is rooted in 1990 with, you know, current day execution, yeah. you know, current day presentation, you know, let's, let's take advantage, let's, you know, we're from New Jersey, we know how to manipulate. <laughs> 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 you, you know what I, I, I know. And it would be wrong if we didn't, but yeah, in a yeah. good way because it's not manipulation for a bad end. It's manipulation or, or taking advantage of a situation for a good end because everybody wins if it's good music. Yeah. So, so sure, it's it's uh, it, it's been that amount of records, but uh, in, in a good period of time right now for White Devil Armory. Yeah, very cool. Mm. Well, obviously, following it, everybody loves the touring and to bring along Prong, which is just that's just rude. That's a great one-two. That's punch. rude. Yeah. That's a twofer. That's a twofer. That's a twofer. <laughs> <laughs> Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously, you want to promote the new record, and obviously people want to hear the hits, so it's like making the set list a total nightmare for uh, you right now. I, I mean, I don't even bother, you know. <laughs> <laughs> just throw them in a hat and just go. <laughs> oh, we're sitting in an Irish pub uh, I, one night with my wife, and we're having a birthday party with, for, from friends, and it, and it was like, I, I, I got to leave. I got to go to rehearsal. We got to make this set. And she was like, how you going to do that? Like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Forget it. Let them do it. <laughs> but, you know, I, I tell you, you know, the, the, the idea of interest, I mean, I still love playing live. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, that's probably the, you know, that's, that's the epitome of the high for me. That's the drug. Um, I chase that high, yeah. you know. So I like playing the new stuff. You know, last year I liked playing Come and Get It and Electric Rattlesnake yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. the stuff off the Electric Age. And, and this year, I'm going to really look forward to playing Pig and Armorist and Bitter Pill and you know whatever else we throw in. So I think that the idea about the set is to celebrate the the present day, but pepper it with uh, our history. Show where we've come from to let you know where we are. Yeah. You know, a, ma a man who knows where he's been knows where he's going. You know that type of a yeah. that type of an approach. Well, I think what's really impressive, especially about Overkill, is the new material and the old. It blends seamlessly. But if you play stuff from like Electric Rattlesnake to previous stuff, I mean, it's they just flow together really well, and I think it's quite impressive of that, you guys. That's a that's a great compliment because you know it's one of the things I'm most proud of is this lineup has gelled. Yeah. So you know you take Electric Rattlesnake and then you take you know uh, Rotten to the Core off of the first record. The idea is that it's being presented by the lineup that recorded the Electric Age or White Devil Armory. So you get that you know modern hop to it. You yeah, get yeah, that yeah. you know that freshness over the top, and I think that. I think that that's actually the cool thing about seeing these songs morph over the years. I mean, yeah. some, you know, the way that song was played or originally written is much different than the way it's played to this day. Still identifiable to each other, oh, yeah. but one for sure is the current day and one for sure is the past. Fuck okay, yeah, man. Well, obviously, being around for so long, you are a quote-unquote living legend. So when people like, tell my, text like, my wife, <laughs> I, will, I, mean, I will have to put it. But when people call you a legend or an icon, are you just like whatever? I just want to go out there and scream, or is it cool? Well, thing? obviously, I mean, I just got a little warm and yeah, like, a little warm and fuzzy and stuff, you know. I, mean, I was just doing an interview with a guy, and he was asking me something about that, and I said, "Yeah, I said that. that I said that holds no water when you're mowing your own lawn. <laughs> <laughs> you're well, weeding you the, the garden. You had the best mowed lawn, then. <laughs> yeah, right. It's perfectly so, straight. Look at that lawn. It's legendary. It's legendary. <laughs> <laughs> that lawn is legendary. <laughs> 
don't really like that. I mean, I, I like, I, you know, I, the thing that turns me on for the, about this whole thing is competition. Yeah. You know, I mean, this is fun, and, and I always consider interviews a necessary evil. You know, it's one of those things you have to go through to be able to get to the stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's where the competition happens, you know. And, you know, I love the fact that young bands will come out and... You know, I was a young band. You're cocky as hell. I mean, you might yeah. be, you know, you might be shaking a guy's hand, but as soon as you get behind the door, you're like, ah, fuck that old fuck. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bury that bastard. You know, and I think to myself, I'm gonna bury that young fuck. <laughs> <laughs> He's fucking mine. Nice. <laughs> but, but the point is, is that that becomes, you know, that kind of increased competitiveness is really more the turn on for me. I mean, I, I want to be relevant. I want to be able to, you know. Uh, the thing I'm proud about is Overkill does shows at high energy levels. Oh, yeah. to, you know, to to this day, yeah. you know, and and we can go out there and compete. So it's, you know, I I'll, I told the story a bunch of times, but I remember we toured uh, Overkill Exodus for Europe. And yeah. You want to talk about competition? Man. <laughs> I mean, these guys are good on that stage, yeah. you know. And I remember Holt walking off the stage one day, and I've known Gary since uh, geez, since bonded, you know, all the way from the beginning, yeah. and we're like cousins, you know. And he's standing there, he's, he's sweating his ass off, he's got his guitar in his hip, and he looks at me, I'm ready to walk on the stage, he goes, beat that, Mr. Ellsworth. Said, My pleasure, Holt. <laughs> watch me go. But that becomes, you know, who wins that competition are the people who watch the show. Exactly. You yeah, know, yeah. so, I mean, the, you know, there, there are no winners and losers when you look at it that way. So when it comes to, uh, let's say, an icon status or legendary stuff, I don't think of that. I still think of myself as still in the game and still trying to prove things. So, uh, you know, legends don't prove things. There you go. Fair enough. Well, do you have any final words to the fans about the new record or anything else in the Overkill world? Hey, hey, boys and girls, Bobby <laughs> Blitz from Overkill coming at you. That's right. Keep your eyes open. White Devil Armory coming your way. July 22nd on E1 Records. Bobby, as always, thank pleasure, you very pleasure, much, Mark. man. All right, man. See you next time, sir. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> Woo! <laughs>